praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited because God is still on the throne and the devil is dethroned. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen and amen. Well, I would like us to look at the how to unlock God's blessing or blessings. And there are a lot of principles connected with that. And those principles are so important to understand. Otherwise, you will become frustrated in life. And you say, but God, I don't understand. You know I love you. And things are supposed to go so much better. But yet there's like an emptiness, a little void. Or perhaps you become dissatisfied with your satisfaction. So I'm going to go straight into the Word and just administer some uh, basic principles. And then we will do the next part after uh, Sunday. But today, I want to focus on understanding the blessing of God. So get ready. Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1.27. Let's go right to the beginning where the blessing started. It says there, so God created man. God created man, right? In his own image. That's number one. You are created in the image of the blessed one who contains the blessings. In his own image of God, he created you and I, male and female. Verse 28, Genesis 1. God bless them. There's the key. There's the key. How do you know that you are blessed? How do you know that you're carrying the blessing of the Lord? We're going to cover a lot of things. And when God blessed them, he said, be fruitful in number. He's, and then he says, fill the earth, subdue it. Bring all your accomplishments because I have blessed you. I've blessed you. I've blessed you. I want you to bring all those accomplishments. Bring it back to me and subject it to my approval and my divine order. There's the key. You see, as sometimes in life, some people will say, well, I'm blessed. I've got a house, I've got a car, uh, or cars, vehicles, and I am busy making some money, and things are happening. Do you know that those things in just a moment of time, can be removed. You want the blessings of God to be sustained. You want the blessings of God to remain upon your life. You know, I know of uh, prominent people and even people in uh, prominent, uh, uh, they've had prominent accomplishments in the sports world, well recognized. But because they have not allowed God to be their first priority, but got caught up with the results, the accomplishments, with the money, guess what? Some of them, God had to get their attention and then God can actually block your blessing. You're still blessed, but God can restrict the flow of that blessing. And let's say the baseball player, I mean, he throws that uh, ball. It's either a curve ball or he puts a spin on it or he reduces the speed of that. 
Uh, however, and suddenly he begins to have shoulder problems. And he cannot be so committed to that sport. God is trying to get that person's attention. Do not wait for something to become so frustrating and go wrong in your life before you surrender and say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. So God bless them. He says, be fruitful. And uh, here's the thing. Before God, catch now this principle, okay? Let me bring this up on your screen here. The principles how God's blessing works. Are you ready? These are the principles, okay? Let me just put uh, something here. I might just have to uh, uh, downsize it, but that's okay. You can see my work, what I'm doing right here on the screen. On the screen. Let me just see here. There we go. Put that over there. There we go. Now you just saw my work. Let's look at the purpose and some of the principles of the blessing. Are you ready? Before God could bless the things in the earth, God had to bring divine order. Somebody say divine order. It's God first, then it's your spice, I mean your spouse, then it is your children, then it is all your other activities in life. God first, then your spouse, then your children, then the other activities in life. And let me just say this to you. God is not isolated. Any uh, person who loves God and isolates them from the body of Christ Jesus they will become disconnected with the head because God's head, the Son, Jesus Christ, His head is upon His body. And if you don't gather with the body, you may have a home church with a pastor. You may have a public church like the Church of Jerusalem, the Church of Antioch. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it says, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. If you don't gather with the body of Jesus Christ, you become disconnected with the head. You may have lip service. Yeah, I love God. But if your actions deny it, you are dysfunctional. Now, having said that, okay, you know, I have to speak the truth in Love. Amen. Now, before God could bless the things in the earth, he had to create divine order. Divine order. I mean, there were chaos in the earth because God will not bless a mess. I say God will not bless a mess. If God blesses a mess, then we're serving something that is all messed up. And God will never bless a mess. Now, God spoke divine order into the earth. There was chaos. The water was right up to the sky. And, and there was darkness and, and all sorts of things. And God said, let there be light. God's blessing operates and functions through light. That doesn't mean when the sun comes up, his blessing shows up. No. It means that you've got to walk in the light as he's in the light with his character traits and obey the word of God. When you obey the word of God and you yield it in submission to the word. Very clear. You see, Jesus didn't stay at home or in his prayer closet all the time. No, 
He connected with the people around him. And every Sunday he was in the synagogue in his local setting teaching. Watch this now. And God spoke divine order. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. You see, we cannot operate in darkness. God is a God of light. You are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. But that light needs to be tapped into the obedience in yielding yourself to God's principles for your light to shine. See, if you are looking for things to make you happy on the outside, those things can be taken away just like that in a moment of time. Because everything that you and I can see is subject to change. Nothing that you see down here, not even me, I'm not forever going to be seen. There comes a day where God is going to say, I want you to return to your place. I have to go to to be absent from this body and present with my God forever and ever. God said, let there be an expanse separating water from water, and God called the expanse sky. So God created divine order through his words. That's why your words can either bless you or your own words can curse your blessing. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, trees on the land that bears forth fruit. Now watch this. A banana tree reproduces after itself because the Almighty God has blessed that banana tree. And because that banana tree maintains divine order, how does that banana tree maintain divine order? It remains planted in the soil out of which it was created. God doesn't have to come down every day and say, Excuse me, you banana tree, what, what's up with you today? You're supposed to produce bananas, bananas. What are these lemons on you? It's no wonder you're looking so sour. You see, a banana tree produces bananas. And when God wanted fish, he spoke to the waters. A fish out of water is just like that. Praise God for fish. Now we can have fish and chips. That's right. We can have fish and chips. Now that fish reproduces itself because it stays in the water out of which it was created. When you stay in the source out of which you were created, you are unstoppable. Nobody can stop the blessing of God on your life because what God has blessed, no one can curse. It is just like that. Now, let me go here, okay? When things were in divine order, you see the multiplication, the increase, and reproduction. God bless you, Prophet Johann. For instance, before Jesus fed the multitudes with a few loaves and fish, he instructed his disciples, make them sit in ranks. The word ranks speaks of divine order. Make them sit in ranks of 50. And those that are seated in Christ, in those ranks, give them the bread. Give them the bread. Hallelujah. 
when there's divine order, the little bit that you have will increase and multiply and begin to meet the needs of others because you will have the over and above anointed supply of God's provision in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout glory to God or give him some praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Now, having said all that, uh, if you look at the trees of the field, think about God, how God created it. And you are likened unto a tree. For instance, you know, you go to uh, Florida, uh, here in the United States, and they're very familiar with the palm trees. And the palm tree is very prominent in the Bible, by the way. And that palm tree, you know, also oil and stuff comes from it, and the anointing and the Holy Spirit is the oil and so on and so forth. Here's the point. During storms... That palm tree goes, shoo, shoo. I mean, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever, that palm tree comes back up. Hallelujah. That palm tree comes right back up. And that palm tree, you are like a palm tree. So when you see those trees out there, you say, God, I thank you. You've created me to praise you. You've created me to bear fruit like that tree. You created me to be a seed-bearing, fruitful tree. Help me that my fertilizer will constantly come through the watering of your word. You know, you have to fertilize everything when it comes to vegetation and plants and uh, good soil with good fertilizer. Then you've got to water it. You've got to water yourself through the word of God. Amen? Before I close, and then tomorrow morning, God willing, we will carry on. Or if it's in afternoon by you. You see, so the divine order invites the blessing of our God. And I'm just reading from the word again. After God brought divine order, after he brought divine order, he then blessed them and said, be fruitful. See, you need to be blessed to be fruitful. Amen? When there's no divine order, you're actually restricting the blessing of God upon your life. So God made man in his own image. You are made in his image. You are blessed to reproduce. You are blessed to be creative. You are blessed to multiply. Yes? You see, the Bible is your manufacturer's manual. You were created out of the word of God. God bless you, Dad. Love you. You were created out of the word of God. And the best place to function and to remain under an open portal to have that blessing following you. How do you know the blessing follows you? When favor shows up. When you keep getting your orders, your contract signed, when you keep getting provided for, uh, that is God's blessing. But here's the thing. When we get caught up with the blessing instead of the blessed one, God can actually cause the flow of your blessing to become blocked, to get your attention. I want to close with this, and then tomorrow, God willing, we will carry on. I'm going to say something very important here. Are you ready for it? Jacob, Jacob is now in a place where, remember, uh, his uh, sons 
uh, Joseph was in Egypt, promoted to be prime minister, so to speak. And there was a famine in the land. And Jacob, long story short, Joseph invited his family to come. I'm not going to go into all the other details, just cutting through the chase. Jacob arrives. Watch this now. Jacob arrives in an idolatrous, non-Christian environment. Okay? That's Genesis 47.10. Now Jacob blesses an ungodly man, Pharaoh. Think about what I've just said. That's in Genesis 47.10. The Bible says, Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. And look what the blessing of God did. And we're closing with that. Look what the blessing of God did. Are you ready? Pharaoh, because he got blessed by a righteous man. Watch now. Pharaoh provided for Jacob and his brothers. How? Genesis 47 verse 11. And I'm just looking at scripture. Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt. Watch now. And gave them property in the best of the best part of the land. Wow. Can you see that? In the best part of the land. The power of God's blessing will settle you in the best part of God's provision for your life. Tomorrow, God willing, we will carry on with this broadcast on the blessing. I want to just bring this up on your screen. If you have enjoyed this teaching, please sow a seed. And you helping me to stay ahead of the curve, so to speak, in having the latest equipment and the best environment so that I can bless you because you, you become part of this uh, broadcast. Your seat can go where you cannot go. And make out your check to AIM or PayPal. Some people are sending us, you know, love gifts from, uh, from PayPal. Or through PayPal, I should say. And I thank God for those that are sowing into AIM, Apostolic Insight Ministries. This is a ministry I've had for a lot of years. Even though I serve a local church, this is my personal ministry. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And remember that when God is for you, who can be against you? And as you can see down there, the principles, how God's blessing works, we're going to carry on tomorrow. I'm taking it little by little. Until next time, may the Lord bless and keep you. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. Love you. Bye now.